Just one look of your eyes and mine turn just one glimpse of your face and one too all right, so good morning church and thank you for being on time for being early um, and today you know uh, this very uh, at, at this moment is our pre-service prayer um, so I, I I thought that today we'll do things a little bit differently just for one week um, and, and rather than just simply to meditate on one passage or one verse, uh, we will actually have some prayer pointers that you can actually pray through as well um, and of course, we will also wait for the rest to come in before we pray together as a real life family. Um, yep, so can I have the prayer pointers up uh, for... Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but but I thought that over the next couple of minutes, you know, we can all just spend some time on our own first. You know, just to um, be be alone with Jesus, be alone with God, um, as we prepare our hearts for uh, today's um, uh, for for today's church service. All right, can we do that? Yep. So just just at your own time right now, you can come before the Lord, um, and uh, so take all these prayer pointers as perhaps maybe an individual prayer before the Lord, that you know God will start to increase. Um, that spiritual fire, that spiritual hunger within your heart, um, that that will not, you know, let let um, let the hunger go after the 21 days of prayer and fasting, but yeah, to continue in that spiritual fire, that spiritual hunger that He has already given to us, to you know, just for the increase of His presence in Rev Life Church, and you know, uh, for us to love His presence so much and to love His Word as well. So, you know, so let's take the next couple of moments. All right, the next few minutes, um, just just um, at your seat where you are at um, let's take time to pray and you know just come before the Lord once again to offer your hearts to offer your lives before the Lord it, uh, perhaps for some of us it, it has been a very tough week a difficult week this could be the best of times to just come into this presence and let it go once again say God with all that's happening in my family with all that's happening in my marriage with all that's happening in my kids life or at my workplace today God I bring them before you. Father, I bring them before you today, God. And today, Lord, I want to spend time in your very presence. So let's take the next couple of minutes to do that, shall we?
Father, we love you, God. Lord, we love you. Lord, Lord, we want to take time today to spend it here in your presence this very morning itself. We thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you that you're preparing us, you're preparing our hearts for today's worship service. And Lord, I know that you will meet with us. Thank you, Jesus. You know, church, for those of you that have just joined us a couple of moments ago, uh, we are having our pre-service prayer and we are taking time to spend personal time with the Lord, um, yeah, before we move on to actually pray uh, for the church as well. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, God. We bless you. Bless you, Lord. 
Thank you, Father. You know, church, can we all begin to rise off it as well? And, and, and this is what I want us to do today, this morning. Um, yeah, we are going to um, group up in groups of twos and threes or even fours, all right, if you want to. Uh, but, 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 you know, with all these prayer pointers that we see over here on the screen, uh, let's pray on behalf of Rev Life Church. Can we do that? Yes, yeah, so let's take the next, uh, how many more minutes? Let's take the next five minutes that we have. Uh, can we turn to the person beside us in groups of twos, threes or fours? And let's pray for Rev Life that uh, there will be an increase of spiritual hunger in this place. Amen. There will be the increase of the spiritual fire. Yeah, there will be the increase in our love for the presence of God. Uh, the increase in our love for His Word. And you know that, that, that he, He'll saturate this place, the worship centre, with the very love and the power and the glory of God. Can we do that? Alright, so let's spend the next few minutes, the next four minutes now. Let's turn to the person beside you. You know, if, if the person beside you is an unfamiliar face, just smile at the person and say, can I pray with you today? Let's pray for our church. That's right. So all across this room now, let's pray for real life. Can we do that? That God will bring us deeper, deeper into the things of God, deeper into the very love, the presence today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Father, today, Lord, we want to come. Lord, we come on behalf of every church member, on behalf of every super lifer, Lord, on behalf of mega life, of, of, um, of the Filipino service, of the Chinese, oh God. Lord, and Lord, we come here, Lord, to, to host the presence of God. We come here, God, Lord, to seek of you today. church to you. Lord, we commit every rev life. Uh, Father, I pray you move in our hearts today, this very morning. God, as, as, as we open up our hearts before you today, God, we want to uh, be in the whole posture of prayer, of prayer and seeking, oh God. Lord, we come in, oh God, into this place, into the sanctuary of God, wanting to know you, wanting to seek of you, wanting to touch your very heart, your very presence, oh God. So Father, I pray, deepen the work that you have started in us, that you have started in Rev Life Church. Church, you know, for those of you who have just joined us, we are praying for Rev Life now. We are praying that God will continue to do His mighty work in this place. So join us in prayer as we take the next two more minutes to pray. Come on, let's join in in prayer together. Thank you, Lord. That's right. So, Father, today, God, we thank you. Father, we thank you because, God, as we gather under one name, as we gather under one voice, Father, we know, Lord, that you're drawing all men to you. So, today, God, we lift up our prayers on high. Today, we lift them up before you, God. Every individual prayer, Father, every corporate prayer that we make today. And today, Father, we say, Lord, revive us, Lord. Revive your church. Father, revive every heart that will come into the worship centre today. And even those in Victory Chapel, in Grace Chapel, in Faith Chapel. Father, I pray for the mighty move of God. Lord, the mighty move of your Spirit to flood across this place, God. So, Father, we ask, Lord, as we draw close to you, Lord, you will draw close to us. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the promises of God. And today, God, I pray, oh Lord, that you deepen our hearts, Lord, to understand what the Spirit of the Lord is doing here in Rev Life Church. And Lord, even as we uh, move in this whole uh, pooping series of sonship, today help us to respond in a way, in a manner that we see you, that we love you as our Heavenly Father. So we thank you, God. We bless you, Father. So bless this time of worship. 
bless this time as we gather under one name bless this time as we we, we encourage one another Lord you talk so much about the one another and today God I pray oh God that Lord as we worship we will worship as a congregation thank you Lord we bless you Father we love you God and all this we pray in Jesus name and all God's people say Amen come on and all God's people say Amen, Amen. let's give God a praise Amen Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, church. Shall we rise to our feet this morning? You know, as we rise, shall we greet our fellow River Life first to our left, to our right? Bless them in the name of the Lord. We're here to worship. We're here to praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And God, we thank you, God, for this day that you have made. May we lift our voices as we worship you. Hallelujah. Shall we give God a praise offering this morning once again? Amen. Let's go. Great are you, Lord, the mighty and strength. As you are faithful, you will ever be. We will praise you for all of our days. Before your glory, we offer everything. Raise your hands, all you nations. Shout to God, all creation. How awesome is the Lord of Moses. For now and forever How awesome is the Lord most high When you send us the God we will go You're the answer We want the world to know We will trust you and you call our name The way you lead us We follow all the way To raise your hands all you nation Shout to God all creation How awesome is the Lord of most high We will praise you together For now how awesome is the Lord of most high Raise your hands, raise your hands To God all creation How awesome is the Lord of most high We will praise you together For now and forever
your presence as we are in your presence Lord we give of ourselves to you we give of our worship our offering unto you today as a church Lord it's our cry it's our one thirst our one hunger Lord Jesus to be where you are Lord to desire for more of you Father let this be our prayer Lord hallelujah you say to us, seek your face, our hearts reply, your face we seek. Come teach us, Lord, reveal your ways, anoint us for the greater things we sing verse one again you say to us you say to us seek your face our hearts reply your face we see Teach us, Lord, reveal your ways, anoint us for the greater things. We have gathered with one thirst and hunger, here to drink of glory and wonder here to cry out come and fill this place come and fill this place I sing a wish I so desire Gaze upon your beauty, God. We will not rest, nor will we cease to with our eyes your face we see. With one thirst and hunger, she the drink of glory and wonder. She the cry out, come and fill this place.
desire Come and fill this place We want to see you And come and fill this place Our hearts are drawn to you, Father
Lord, we desire more to see of your glory. Just to look on your face, just a glimpse of your heart. That's all we ask for, Lord. So we wait and we wait, we wait for you. Our hearts are expecting, Lord, for you to move. Lord, this day we pray for chains to be broken, Lord. For hearts to be renewed, Lord, as we wait upon you. As your glory falls in this place, Lord, hearts to be renewed. New wineskins, Lord, we ask for new wineskins, Father. Renew our hearts, renew our passion, our desire for you, Lord. This hunger, this thirst that we have for you, reignite it once more, Lord, Father. Shall we sing the chorus of the song again? We have gathered with one thirst, Lord, for you. And you alone, Lord, you are our agenda, Father. As we have gathered with one thirst and hunger, we hear the drink of glory and wonder. We hear cry out come and fill this place oh we have gathered we have gathered breakfast and hunger here to drink of glory and water to cry out, come and fill this place. Come and fill this place. Come and fill this place. Give all to be with. 
up on high. Lord, we exalt you. Real life exalts you, God. Here in the far east of Singapore, God, there's a church. There is a people that worships the true and living God. There's a people that worships you in spirit and in truth. There's a people that declares the name of God. 
that is high above every name. Oh Jesus, oh yes, is to run. Takanama Sukurama High. Father, from the bottom of our hearts, Lord, we give you glory today, God. Father, this morning we give you glory. Jesus, Lord. We love you, God. Church, I'm going to ask the worship team to lead us in this song again. And perhaps there are a number of you here, I just sense in my heart, in my spirit, that there are a number of you here, you're unable to exhort the Lord. You're saying, God, how can I exhort you? In the midst of my trying moments, in the midst of my difficult times, with my marriage, my family, even my kids or my business, how can I exhort, how can I praise? But you know, today we are going to lift up a faith praise unto the Lord. We are going to lift up the name of God. And today I pray that if you are finding yourself in this situation, allow your spirit to, 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 to just open up before the Lord once again. Say, God, no matter how my situation is like, I am going to praise you. I am going to praise you because you deserve all honour, you deserve all glory, you deserve all praises and we are going to praise you today. So worship team, can you lead us in a song once again? And I'm going to ask every one of us, can we lift up our hands towards heaven and let's exalt Him today. Let's exalt Him. But despite of our circumstances, despite of all that we are going through in life, despite of our family situation, despite of, it's always the despite of God, we exalt God. Father, we exalt today. Lord, we exalt you, God. Lord, we lift you up on high. Oh God, Lord, in the trying moments, in the difficult of difficult situations, Lord, in the worst of times, Father, we choose. Lord, we choose to exalt you, God. So God, I pray. Father, hear our worship this morning. Hear our cry. Lord, for the depths of our hearts, we give you glory. We give you praise, oh God. Lord, we exalt your holy name. church, uh, I'm going to lead us in a time of prayer and uh, can I just uh, ask the TAP to flash for us the pre-service prayer slides um, and I, I just sense in my heart that let, let's come together and let's pray shall we? Let's do that together um, during this morning's pre-service prayer I felt led um, to, to, to round the church together and say let's pray let's pray uh, that God will increase the spiritual hunger, the spiritual fire among us, can we? Yeah, and let's pray that God's presence will be so manifested here that we will love His presence, we will love His church, we will love the Word Amen. So can I just ask that we all hold hands together. I know we have not done this in a long time but can you just stretch off your hands and let's 
let's pray as a real life family together. Um, just take one prayer pointer. We don't have one hour. We only got two minutes. All right, but let's take one prayer pointer and let's lift up the. Let's lift up your praise right now. Lift up your voice and, and let's let's worship together. Let's pray together. Come on, church. Come on, church. You know the praying church is a strong church. A praying church is a strong church. And together we come. We come under one voice. We come with one heart. And Lord, we pray, oh God. That's right. Just choose one prayer pointer that means the most to you. And let's pray. Let's pray. Let's intercede right now. Father, we pray for the increase today, an increase in hunger, an increase, oh God, in fire, in passion, oh God, an increase, oh God, in the way that we relate to you, oh God, in the depth of worship, in the depth of understanding, in the spiritual things of God. Father, I pray for such an increase in the love, the love for your word, the Lord, as we open up your word to read, oh God, Lord, the word of God will come alive once again so today oh god lord i pray father revive this church revive us oh god revive oh god lord as your people come lord as your people come with the one heart the one spirit and one cry today god i pray you move among us oh god touch us oh god in in powerful in imaginable ways oh god and lord you do something in us and through us so today god this is what we are praying this is what we are saying lord this is our cry oh god this is our cry as your church oh god as we gather as we hold hands as we join our hearts as one we are saying god release your presence across this place lord not just here but we are so contending for our super lifers down below and at grace chapel at faith chapel lord we are so praying for the chinese ministry god move among us today so today we wait on you we wait upon you god and say father we love you god we love you god we love you lord jesus thank you lord thank you and we will love you from the bottom of our hearts thank you father and all of god's people say amen and amen praise god praise god amen amen praise lord you know just church before you sit down can you turn to five people that you do not know or just around you give them a big high five a hug and say it is so good to see you here in the house of the lord amen praise god wow love you god amen amen Praise God. So good morning, church. It is so good to see so many of us worshipping the Lord on the uh, Sunday morning. And before we move on to the rest of our, of our service segments, we want to take this opportunity to welcome any one of us who's here for the first time. So friends and guests, if you're here for the first or even second time, all right, a friend brought you along or you happen to come on your own, but you're here for the first or second time, can I ask that you kindly just wave your hands so that we can give you a really warm, real life welcome. Okay, then I see you. One gentleman at the back there. Is there anyone else who's here for the first time? Anymore? Come on, churches. Welcome them. All right, there's another lady here as well. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much for uh, coming to Rift Life Church. And we pray that you're having an amazing time in the presence of God together with us. And uh, we want to extend a warm invitation uh, for you to join us at our guest welcome lounge, which is situated at the first floor at the Fellowship Atrium. Do join us for a good cup of coffee, tea and refreshments. And uh, we would love to share more about our church with you as well. Now, church, um, let's um, move on to the next service segment, which is our Tyson offerings. So let's prepare our hearts right now, and um, you can give digitally via pay now or in the bank transfer. The links are shown on the screen. All right, so let's prepare our hearts and let's pray, shall we? Father, today I want to thank you for the release of your presence here. I thank you, Lord, that when we pray, when we worship, when we gather, Lord, you are always in our midst. And today, God, I pray that as we give to you our tithes and our offerings, Father, let it come from that sacrificial heart, that cheerful spirit that longs to see your kingdom come on earth, that longs to see your gospel, the message of Jesus Christ uh, be, be delivered, be extended to the nation, to God. So today, I pray you bless the tithes, bless the offerings, and I pray, O oh God, Lord, that you bless the giver as well. We thank you, Father. We love you, God, and all this we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people say, Amen and Amen. Praise God. All right, before Pastor Ernie shares the word this morning, I got a couple of announcements for you. And the first uh, concerns our Make Life Camp. Um, just a very gentle reminder that uh, for all parents of Make Lifers age 13 to 18, the restoration for our youth camp, which will be held in Malaysia, JB, closes tomorrow. Okay, so um, I want you to know that camps are 
an excellent um, space, a place, you know, for youth and young people to encounter the Lord. Many of us who grew up in Meg Life, including myself, our lives were changed by, you know, and transformed by camps like this. So if your teens have not already signed up for the camp, all right, uh, tomorrow is the final day that you can actually do so. Now, in addition, if you would like to sign up as a parent volunteer in this camp, uh, the sign-up links are shown on the screen and you can also go to our digital bulletin as well. Now, church, last week uh, we were very happy and pleased to announce that, um, that, that our 2024 mission trip schedule is already out. So this year we have a total of 16 mission trips to choose from and the links can be found on the screen and also on our missions website. Now, it is here that I just want to take a little bit of time, you know, to share with us about upcoming trips, okay? And um, broadly speaking, we have categorized these trips into three categories. And the first and foremost, we have the teaching and empowering trips, okay? So you can see all this in the slides over there. You can also go to the website. It is all there for you. And one of the major highlights under this category will be the November trip to Pangan Sinan, which is a province-wide youth conference and night rallies. Okay? Um, every year, these large gatherings have been a catalyst for God to move really mightily in the province of Pangan Sinan. And this coming November, we felt that we should gather the young people of the province so we are expecting about 2,000 to 3,000 young people coming together, all right? And it promises to be really faith-filled, explosive, powerful, you know, and refreshing. And in trips like this, um, it gives us really a major boost in our spiritual life before the Lord as well. Okay, um, now, the, 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 another category, actually, the final category that I want to bring your attention to um, is uh, we have planned something intentional for all of us under the exposure and ministry trips. That's the subsequent slide. That's right. Um, the exposure and ministry trips. Now, because of the 21 days of prayer and fasting that we had together, we felt that we really wanted to do this as a Real Life family. And under this category, we have sought to keep the mission trips team smaller, all right, and with a less intensive and packed schedule. So this will cater for cross-cultural and spiritual discovery uh, through the meeting of overseas churches and the unreached local communities, okay? So our hearts for these trips is to add a deeper spiritual meaning as we grow our missional heart um, for the nations, okay? Um, and under this category as well, we also do have options where if you're thinking of taking a longer trip, perhaps, you know, you are on a long school break or um, you, you have resigned from your work and you're just taking a bit of a break and you are thinking of taking a longer mission trip, you are now able to spend two to four weeks in the missions field uh, through our immersion program or immersion trip as well. So uh, contact us, connect with us. We would love to get in touch with you. Now, lastly, uh, if you have actually looked at our mission schedule, you have noticed that there are Vietnam trips uh, have been opened this year. Vietnam is a country we have adopted for missions and we are embarking on what we call the Micah 6 8 project. Um, as an initial launch as we reach the poorer communities in Vietnam. Amen. So all this, once again, can be found um, on the links shown above. Okay? Now, it, it is with my great joy that finally we can introduce our Myanmar pastor uh, to all of you. Um, this, this week was supposed to be part two of, of the missions weekend, all right? But of course, we shifted it to May itself, uh, but... Pastor Judah already booked his ticket, lah, so he's here, all right? So, but we, we really wanted to introduce him to, to all of us, and he really wanted to say thank you for all the contributions that we have given for the last many, many years as well. Um, you know, so Pastor Judah, just a quick introduction. Pastor Judah has been so key to Real Life's work in Myanmar uh, over the last 11 years, so that's how long we've known each other, all right? And since the COVID time happened, all right, Pastor Judah has been carrying the heavy burden um, of supporting his people back in Myanmar. For example, if you guys can recall, last week I spoke about the blankets that we sent to the very cold Chin State. It was Pastor Judah and his team that organized. He took a domestic flight down and to spread out all the blankets to the different places. Now, we also need to think that uh, these are very tough times for the people, uh, which includes, you know, uh, they are experiencing a war right now. Um, so there are many and countless of checkpoints they have to go through. So there are many times like this where he, uh, Pastor Judah or his family or his workers, they are risking their life just to venture into some of these places. 
Um, another, another example would be the monthly rice distribution that we have been giving to Myanmar over the last 36 months. I mean, we found Phil for the last 36 months. More than 10,000 families have received rice. Come on, let's give God a praise offering as well. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> And not only that, but, but late last year in November, December, we, we gave a massive food supply to the Assemblies of God denomination for times of emergencies. You can see from the screen. So Pastor Judah and his team for the Assemblies of God uh, were very critical in making all this happen also. And all the way back in 2021, where uh, COVID first happened during the period of time, you know, um, uh, we, we realized together with Pastor Judah that there were homeless and the street beggars in Yangon. And very quickly, we made up a plan. You know, we came up with, with a plan and Pastor Judah found land and we built homes for the street beggars within one month. All right, and you can see from the slides over there too. Bring it back even further, all right? Pastor Judah was also very key in the oxygen concentrators where we distributed to different places when, you know, when we were all running off oxygen during the COVID times, all right? And he was key for that. So Pastor Judah has been so pivotal in many of these works and it's not an exaggeration to say that perhaps through his dedication, his sacrifices and often pain, um, the people in Myanmar has been blessed and perhaps hundreds if not thousands of families were actually saved during this period of time. Okay, um, James chapter 1, verse 27, um, this is something that God has placed in my heart since the 21 days. And, and James wrote that pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in the trouble, the distress, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. And I just felt that, you know, today as we um, acknowledge Pastor Judah as our main pastor, um, uh, you know, Pastor Judah, thank you so much for being such a great example uh, from James chapter 1 verse 27. Can we put our hands together and let's welcome Pastor Judah on stage. And I know that Pastor Judah has a very short you know, greeting that he has for us from Myanmar as well. Thank you. Hi everyone. Ming Laba. Uh, greetings from Myanmar. So some of you will know Ming Laba. Right? So uh, thank you for welcoming us uh, to your church and also to your soul group. It's my pleasure to uh, speak on behalf of our peoples and bring greetings from Assemblies of God churches in Myanmar and also from the Living Water families. I want to read the scripture from Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. It says that a friend loves at all time and a brother is born for a time of adversity. Dear River Life Church, pastors, Staffs and members, you are not just a good friend, but brothers and sisters for us and family for Myanmar. One of my favorite songs, which is written by Josh Groban, which is You Raise Me Up. In the first verse, it says, When I am down and oh, my soul so weary, when troubles comes and my heart burden be, then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me. As you all know this uh, through the sharing of our uh, pastor, Pastor Joachim, and also you also know from the news that because of the situation of our country, we all are down because of facing difficulties and trials. But as for me, I praise God for such kind of a good brothers and sister who not just sit a while, but walk along with us, crying for us while we are in sorrow, feeding us while we are in hunger, celebrate with us while we are joyful. I hope that God will multiply for your generosity, love and care for us. By your praying, loving and caring for our people, churches, and even to the pre-believers, we can survive in times of hardship. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25 says that a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. I want to leave the prayer request for our country who wants to come out from difficulties and hardship. And secondly, 
pray for those who become homeless and victims. Number three, pray for the civilians to know God in time of this situation. And number four, pray, please pray for the restoration of our people in mentally, physically, and spiritually. Finally, I want to say thanks to Pastor Lionel, Pastor Joachim, Gans, and all of our pastors, ministers, staffs, and all of the church members. I want to say thanks to all of you from the bottom of my heart. And we cannot pay back anything to you, but our Lord Jehovah Jireh will be bless you more than before. Thank you, and may God bless you all. Praise God, and thank you so much, Pastor Judah. Um, Church, I, I believe that this is the right moment that we also pray for Pastor Judah and Myanmar. Uh, can we all begin to stand to our feet and let's stretch off our hands, shall we? I know that we're running late for our service, but uh, this is a moment that we have to pray for our brethren uh, in Myanmar. So, Father, today we want to thank you. We thank you for such an amazing friend that we have in Pastor Judah and his family. We thank you, Lord, that our paths crossed more than 11 years ago and how you have brought this friendship deeper, um, um, it, this friendship with River Life and Living Waters Church deeper to the place where there is trust, where there is unity, where there's prayers and support. So Father, today we commit Pastor Judah and his family and Living Waters Church where he leads. Lord, we commit them to you. We pray, Lord, that you protect them, cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray, O oh God, Lord, for grace and favour to always rest upon them, for the hedge of protection to always protect them and be with them. Today, Lord, we also want to ask for the people in Myanmar, those who are suffering right now, which is practically everyone. Lord, we ask for those who are homeless, for those who are sick, for those who are hungry, for those who are starving. Lord, we, we lift them up before you. God, forgive us that we have not prayed enough for this country, we have, that we have not prayed enough for uh, our fellow brothers and sisters in a different land. But today, God, we lift them up, oh God. And Father, you are Jehovah Jireh. And I pray that you will provide for all of their needs. Lord, not just here in Singapore, but God in Myanmar especially and in the countries that are suffering right now. So Lord, I pray, Lord, in the most of desperate times, as they call upon your name, Lord, you will answer them with miracles after miracles, food provision after food provision, Lord, with healings after healings, oh God, for those who can't afford to see the doctors anymore. So God, be with them today. Lord, I pray you strengthen Pastor Judah. Lord, strengthen the assemblies of God as they continue on with this heavy task of, of simply continuing church, moving the people forward, encouraging them. Lord, at times like this, we know that the ministers are also discouraged by themselves, but they have to encourage the people. So I pray, Father, that you encourage all of our brothers and sisters who are ministers in the assemblies of God and in the different uh, denominations in Myanmar. Encourage them, strengthen them, God. We thank you, we bless you, and all this we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people say, Amen and Amen. Praise God. Amen. Oh my goodness, I forgot one more announcement about uh, before Pastor Ernie. All right, so uh, church, we are on this whole series called Sonship, and um, there are two um, um, after service, post service workshops that we have for you. Now, because we can't cover all that we need to, to cover, all right, in, um, in, in just a pulpit time. So, this week after service, we have um, Pastor Thomas and Mi Fang that will share, you know, on, on um, more about sonship itself and how can we take away the hindrances that will actually um, uh, hinder us from getting closer to God and uh, to receive God's love as well. All right, can do. So, um, if you you guys have not, nothing planned after service. Do stay back, and both sessions are 11:30 p. 11:30 uh, a.m. All right, no restoration is needed as well. All right, if not, there's nothing else. Let's put our hands together and welcome Pastor Ernie as he shares with us the word this morning. Hi, good morning, church. Thank you for joining us uh, this Sunday morning for our service. And I uh, just want to tag on what Pastor Joachim has just shared. You know, in, uh, one of the things that came out of the 21 days of prayer as we discussed as a host uh, leadership team was actually uh, we wanted to see what God was doing in the church. And during the 21 days, we felt that God was actually doing a lot of inner healing, a lot of work of healing the deeper parts of our lives that actually prevent us 
from reaching God, prevent us from growing closer to God. So that's why we started this whole uh, Sonship series uh, last week. And, but in a service like that, sometimes it's very hard for us uh, in one author call to be able to just deal with all the issues that are here and there are the multitude of issues, there are the variety of situations and the uh, combination is always very tricky like not to deal with one shot like that. So that's why we have the workshops after the service because we want to grow deeper together with you. And also the workshop is not the... Uh, we can't, because it's also done in a mass setting, right? We can't go deeper into your individual issues. So this is where I want to encourage you. If you feel that throughout this series, there are actually issues in your life that you want to deal with. For example, like last week we covered a lot about forgiveness towards our earthly parents, or you feel that you have done something in your life that caused you to be uh, um, uh, entangled in something that you can't get out and is causing you not to be able to reach God in that sense or to fully receive his love, we encourage you to come for our prayer ministry, sign up for our prayer ministry and we actually have a prayer ministry called um, RTF and they actually have booths, a booth downstairs and there'll be a booth here as well somewhere on the I don't know, left or right like, of, the, of the altar area. Okay, I'll try and find Pastor Thomas, but he's not here. Okay, either the left or right side, okay, uh, from 11.15 onwards, okay? And, uh, but if you go downstairs after the, the service, they have a booth there. You can inquire a bit more what this prayer ministry is all about because every situation is unique and we need to deal with different things within the individual lives. And sometimes it's very hard to do it in the mass setting. All right, so I encourage you, uh, if you want to deal, you want to get right with God, you want to be set free, be whole, uh, be whole in your whole life, you know, sign up for the ministry and walk in the freedom that God has bought for you on the cross. Last week, I shared from the prodigal son, the story of the prodigal son, and we, we ended with this, that uh, our earthly parents were placed by God here on this earth to reflect God into our lives but because of sin, our earthly parents who never receive the proper parenting from their own parents, they cannot give what they have never received to us, their children. And therefore, the image of God in them is distorted. We don't receive that. Instead, we receive discipline. We receive pain and disappointment from them. And as a result, we become almost like hurt and we live with that pain for a lot of our lives. And that, that's why I shared my testimony, because I realized after I shared that actually that is majority of our stories here today, that that's a culture in Singapore, in Malaysia, and the Asian culture. High expectation parents, but they are quite distant from us. It's the typical Asian thing, right? We grew up with very stoic fathers and very distant. And, but that is not God. And you realize that the way your parents actually raise you affects how you relate with God. And therefore, we feel that we need to earn God's love, do all these things to earn God's love. But God is saying, I'm not like that. I actually reach out to you first. In fact, I die on the cross for your sins. You can come freely to me. You can come on home. So that was the story of the prodigal son. But today, I want to go into the second half of that story, okay? And I, I want to uh, propose to you that actually the whole point of Jesus telling that story is about the second half of the story, and that deals with the older brother. The whole point of the story is not so much the prodigal son, but if you read in context, the whole point is about the older brother. Okay, how many of you are the, the oldest in the family? Okay, I'm going to talk to you today. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's come to God's way and going to read it together, all right? Yeah, so uh, Luke chapter 15, verses 25 to 32, okay? So the scene is this right now. We, we ended last week with uh, the prodigal son coming home. The father was so happy and they threw a big feast where all the village came and they killed the, the, suck, the suckling duck. No, the, the what's that? Uh, the... Fattened calf, okay? The choice meat, you know, that you reserve only for very, very special occasions. Not occasions when a prodigal returned. Not an occasion like that, okay? And they were celebrating at home. And this is where the story continues, okay? So verse 25, it says this. Now his older brother was in the field. And as he came near and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked, what is the meaning of these things? And he said to him, your brother has come and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. 
But he was angry, the older brother, and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him, but he answered his father. He said, look, all these years I have served you, and I've never disobeyed your command. Yet you never even give me, have given me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, this useless son, comes back, who has devoured all your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. But it is fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this brother of yours was dead, but he is alive again. He was lost, but now he's found. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you once again, Lord, uh, for this beautiful story that you told 2,000 years ago, and yet today is still such a beautiful story that we treasure so much, Lord. And Father, today, even as we talk to the elder brother, Father, talk about the elder brother, Lord, we just want to ask that you cause us, a Lord, to open our hearts. Father, if there's anything that causes us to distance ourselves from you, Lord, this very day, Father, we ask, deal with, with, deal with us, Lord, this very day so that we can walk in the freedom, in the wholeness, we can walk in the life that you have given to us on the cross, a lot, because that is our inheritance as sons and not slaves, Lord. So we ask that you search our hearts to stay, come and do your work that only you can do in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I brought, my, brought, with you, I brought uh, for you a couple of things here, which I'm going to use later, so just give me a while to set it up. And the first thing that I brought is actually a mirror from Ikea. Okay, and I, I actually it's not mine, it's my, my wife's one. Okay, and I didn't, I forgot to ask her for permission, but it's okay. All right, now a lot of us we have mirrors at home, right? Okay, now what is the purpose of a mirror? What's the purpose of the mirror? Can you just shout out a number of purpose of the mirror? Pastor Lana said to show how handsome you are, that's true. Yeah, any other things? Okay. So that's why Pastor Lionel wake up very happy every morning because he looks in the mirror. <laughs> Any other reasons why we have the mirror? Why, why, what do we use the mirror for? You all have mirrors, right? <laughs> okay, the first reason why we actually have the mirror is so that we can actually focus on the things in us, you know, that make us look good about presentation. Right? That's why for, for men, we actually stand in front of a mirror and what do we do? We comb our hair and we shave the beard. Okay? Or, or, or if you, you have facial hair, you have a beard and, and a moustache and you want to trim it, you make sure there's cap neat. It's about presentation. For girls, a lot different. Lah. You know, it's not just the hair and, and you don't have beard, you know, but the eyelash, lah, then must put the foundation you know, and the, 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 what, the, the eyebrow, you know, then you do all the things, you know, and you take three times longer in the toilet than the men. The men just go there, psh, done, we're out of there, right? So it's very different, okay? So the mirror, one of the reasons why we have the mirror is for presentation, to make us look good. Right? None of us looks into the mirror and then we try and make ourselves look ugly. Correct? That is something wrong, right? But there's another reason why we have mirrors. And the other reason is this, is to look for defects. Because we can't see our own defects, we need something like a mirror. Wow, so handsome. We need, to, we need, to, we need something like a mirror to actually look, okay, what are some of the defects on my face? For example, I think some of you may realize this, that actually I have an eyelid that has been dropping quite a bit ever since I had an eye infection about a couple of months ago, and it's still there. You can see actually there, right? You can see the defects. Or whether I have an eye infection, whether do I have a lump anywhere in my, in, my, in my face, or even if you have a bigger mirror on any parts of your body, whether there's decay on your teeth, whether there's anything wrong with your ears, you look that for in, as, um, use a mirror as an inspection tool to see whether there's anything wrong. You know, the Bible says that the Word of God is like a mirror. And you hold up that mirror 
And you don't only use it for presentation, you use it for inspection. To look into your life, is there anything wrong with your life? And to correct those parts that are actually wrong. Okay, so the, the, mir- the mirror of God's word is something that you can use either to make yourself look good or make yourself healthy spiritually. It depends on how you use it. All right? And the Pharisees in the time of Jesus, the whole reason why they went to the law of the prophets was to make them look good, to ensure that the image they have around them is one that is perfect without flaws, like they, like they paint the picture that they are so holy and righteous, but they never use the word of God, they never use the law to examine their own lives. Where do I fall short in light of what God has said? And that is the elder brother. And that's what we are going to be talking about today. Because remember, I told you last week that to understand the parable of the prodigal son, you must first look at chapter 15, verse 1 and 2. Jesus was responding to the Pharisees' attitude towards the sinners. And so today, we're going to look at the elder brother as Jesus brings the whole story to a landing. Okay, and um, just something interesting for you. I want you to notice that from in chapter 15, Jesus told three parables. The parable of the, uh, the lost sheep, parable of the lost coin, and finally, parable of the lost son. Okay, and something very interesting which I noticed here. You will find that in these three parables, there's actually a progression. Okay, what, what do I mean? Okay, look at this, okay? Number one is this. You see, the parable of the lost sheep. Jesus give a number. A man has 100 sheep and he loses one. One out of 100 is how much? Okay, since you all didn't grow up in Malaysia, let me tell you. One out of 100 is 1%. Wow, revelation, right? Okay? So, and the result is this. When they find that 1% of the thing that he's lost, the result was rejoicing. Okay? They re- the, the, the shepherd rejoiced, so happy, the 1% that I lost, I should get back. Then Jesus goes on to talk about the second parable, which is about the lost coin. And the lost coin is no longer 1%. He actually said, a woman actually has 10 coins, and she loses one. Okay? One out of 10 is how much? MOA students? 10%, Right? 10% of your wealth, of what you have, you lose it, you find it, what is the response? The response is, rejoice with me, rejoicing, celebration. And then he comes to the final parable, okay, which is the parable of the lost son. And the lost son now is not 1%, it's not 10%, but it is 50%. Two sons, one was lost, and he returned. What was the response? Let's have a feast and celebrate. So Jesus is trying to hit a point here that if you lose earthly things, things like coins, like your belongings, a sheep, your natural response when you find it is that you rejoice. How much more that when a brother who is lost comes back to the faith, comes back and repents, How much more rejoicing should there be? Okay, so he was tackling the Pharisees, all right? So the Pharisees' attitude, we all know, towards sinners was really bad. They disdained sinners. They wanted nothing to do with them. They isolated them in society, all right? And this is is captured very beautifully inside the parable of the prodigal son, all right? The first thing I want to talk about is actually the review, Okay? The scene was this, everyone in the, in, the, in the story was celebrating, they were eating the fattened calf, you know, the, the whole village was literally there and they were celebrating. And the elder brother came and asked the servant, what is happening? The brother came back, your father took your inheritance, which is the calf, the fattened calf, and killed it and they ate it. Of course, naturally, the elder brother would not be happy. Okay? He was the one who had been working in the field. And then he came back and this is what happens. My inheritance is gone. But my inheritance is gone. And this useless brother of mine gets celebrated while I worked so hard in the field 
and not even one goat is given to me. So he refused to come in. He refused to come in. He was angry. He was angry. But the father comes out and pleaded with him to go back into the house and celebrate and join the celebration. You see, in ancient times, right, when the, the son refuses to participate in a celebration, the son is actually saying, I do not want to be a part of that family. Or I disagree with whatever my father is trying to do there. I want to have nothing to do with it. And that's why he stood outside. That's why he stood outside. Okay? And that would have brought a lot of shame to the father. A lot, a lot of shame to the father. Everyone in the village will be asking, Where, where's your brother? Where's your brother? And their response is that he's actually outside, refused to come in. And they all know there was shame brought on the whole family, on the father. The response of the elder brother actually revealed the true condition of his heart. The true condition of his heart. If you, if you look at the verses, you will find that he actually was very rude to the father. Okay, he vented his frustration. Okay, in fact, he started off not even addressing the father. He didn't say lao pe, he didn't say papa or, 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 or no, my father. What did he say? He said, look, look. It's a bit like Chinese, right? When you're angry with your parents, your whole language changed. You no longer say I, you say what? Limpea, <laughs> right? That's what, that's, what, that's what we do, right? In Asian culture, that's what we do. The language changes because you're trying to show your frustration. And exactly what happens here, as he deals with the father, as he talks to the father, angry, frustrated, look, look, doesn't address him, look, all these years I've served you and I've never disobeyed your command. He never did anything wrong as a son in the house. And he was angry because the one that did everything wrong was celebrated and not him. So, and then he, he felt that there was unfair, he, um, un, unfairness in the way the father treated them. Okay, you never give me a young goat to celebrate with my friends. Notice this, he never said, you never give me a young goat so that we can celebrate together or celebrate as a family. He said, so that you can, I can celebrate with my friends. And he, he said, you killed the fattened calf, my fattened calf. My inheritance. So what in essence he's trying to say is this, I disagree with the decision you made to celebrate the younger son, the prodigal son. You see, the elder brother's relationship <clears throat> with the father was merely transactional. I do all these things and I expect you to reward me because I did all these things. That was the elder brother. While the younger brother demanded the inheritance and got it, the elder brother expected the father to give him the inheritance or to reward him for all the things that he has done. You know what, church? There's a bit of the older brother in every one of us. Now, what do I mean by that? Let me bring this a bit closer to home, right? Like for many of us here, we function in that elder brother type of attitude towards God. God, I pray. God, I give. Therefore, God, you have to bless me. God, I, I, I bring my children for family devotion every other day or every other week. So therefore, you know, they should grow up in the ways of the Lord. Right? God, I invest. Therefore, I must get the return. Right? God, I serve faithfully in the church since 1990, when the church started, not one weekend have I missed a service. So God, in every area of my life, you are supposed to bless me because I give. I pray 10 hours a day, God. Therefore, you must bless whatever that I do in life. I read the word. Therefore, you know, God, you must do all these things. You must bless me because I did all these things. But instead, what we are faced with is we are faced with life's challenges. Our children didn't turn up the way that we want them to. We never get that promotion that we've worked so hard. We're overlooked for various things. Our marriages struggle. 
Or maybe for some of you, you even have a sickness and say, God, what is happening? How can I call you a good father? I mean, I pray so much. I read the Bible every day. You know, I, I tithe. People tithe 10%. I tithe 50%. You know, so you have to bless me. Why didn't you bless me? And the worst thing is this. You come to church and you see that brother who never turned up for cell group one <laughs> comes to the altar with a sickness. God, God heals him and God did not heal you. You see the, the, the parent with the wayward children. All, each and every single one of them became doctor, lawyer, engineer. What else? Uh? Uh, pastor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and your kids here are wayward. Don't know where they are. In some nightclub somewhere and you ask the Lord, God, what did I do wrong? Did I not pray enough for them? Did I not give enough? You see, friends, if that is your approach towards God, you are the elder brother because your relationship with God is transactional. And that's a big problem we have in Singapore, right? In a country that's big on efficiency, whatever we put in, if I give my time, if I give my effort here, I expect to get the return, right? I mean, you put in your amount of money with a wealth fund, you expect to get back right. Same thing, it comes to church. The world comes in the church. God, I pray this much, I do this much in church, I expect to get these things from you. It's transactional. It's transactional. So when we approach God like that, we become transactional with God rather than see Him as a father. So back to the story. While the younger brother was a prodigal that left the home, extern he, externally he was a prodigal. Everyone could see it. The older brother was also a prodigal internally. There were two sons that were lost in the story and both needed to come home. Both needed to come home. And I want to, at this moment, just talk a little bit about a big um, topic in regards to the elder brother and it's regarding the orphan heart. You notice in the verses just now that I read that even though the brother was at home, the older brother was at home and doing all these things, he was never a part of the family. He was never a part of the family. In fact, he has no rela close relationship with anyone in the family. He said, why not you give me a goat so that I can celebrate my friends? The family was never a priority. And that is the orphan heart. Okay, I want to read something from um, this particular um, pastor who is actually one of the pioneers that deal with um, sonship and the orphan spirit. Okay, his name is Jack Frost. I think he passed away about 10 years ago. Okay, amazing man of God. Right? When you possess an orphan heart, you never truly feel at home anywhere. You are afraid to trust, afraid of rejection, and are afraid to open up your heart to receive love. So unless you're able to receive love, you cannot unconditionally express love even to your own family. When you close your hearts to receive love, you close your hearts to intimacy, and you take on an independent, self-reliant attitude. A close and isolated heart manifests itself with an attitude that says, if anything is going to get done around here, I have to do it myself. This results in superficial relationships and you begin chasing after counterfeit affections. Counterfeit affections. And if you read the story of the prodigal son and the description of the elder brother, he carries this in his whole life. And there are four things I picked up about the elder brother from the passage here. Of course, the orphan heart is a very big topic, okay? But I just want to show you just four things about the elder brother here, okay? Number one is this, he had unforgiveness. He was easily offended, always angry. Okay, number two, he, was, he had high expectations of the father. I do this, therefore you must do this. And number three, he rejected correction and authority. He disagreed with his father's decision. And last but not least, he did not have any deep relationships in the family. No deep relationship. 
That is some of the signs of an orphan heart. And because everything internally is crumbling, the focus is to maintain that outer image, to make yourself look good, just as how the Pharisees did. Inside they were rotten, but they tried to do everything to make their image look good. Okay, let me just illustrate it this way, okay? Let me illustrate it this way. I'm going to ask Pastor Thomas to come on stage, okay? Uh, can you come? Yeah. So that I can cast out the donut. No. <laughs> we all have a bit of an orphan heart within us. Yeah, I need you to stand there. Sorry, just check. You have insurance, right? Okay, just checking. Okay. <laughs> okay, and, and, and the way we relate to God and we try to deal with um, as an orphan, we relate to God in that way as an elder brother. You find that you, find, you do so many things to try to make, um, to earn God's love and to, to, to create that perfect image of yourself. So you know what? Every day, my cell leader asks every Friday when we meet, it's house everyone's quiet time. So I must make sure, you know, I must, I must really make sure you know, that every single day, I spent two hours in the Word of God. Okay, hold this one, drop, huh? okay? I must spend. Then, then the, the, the cell leader or, or on Sunday comes to church, you know, and they say, no, you must pray, you must spend time with God, you know, and you must go into the prayer closet and pray. So, so Thomas says, okay, I will do this, I will do this, so that, you know, everybody can see that I'm doing this. So when I go to cell group, I can say, wow, I pray five, six hours a day, right? Okay, so he carry this. And then, you know, and then they say, and they say, Pastor Ernie say, you know, that in order to know God, you must know His Word. So, Pastor Thomas, you know, you read 10 chapters a day, okay? You read 10 chapters a day, all right? 10 chapters a day. And say, wow, I now feel with the knowledge of God and all that. And then you go, go and hear Pastor Joachim preach and Pastor Joachim say, you must participate in the work of God in the nations. So you go for six mission trips a year. All right, you go for sex mission trips a year, okay? Okay? And, and you, you maintain that particular image. And then, you, and then Pastor Ernie comes out again on, on, on the family series, and he says, no, you must take good care of your family. You must love your wife as Christ loved the church, right? You must really love your wife, okay? You must love your wife, okay? As Christ loved the church. Here's the point of this, okay? Wow, you're very strong. Okay, here's the point of this, okay? Then you come on Sunday and you stand before the Lord and the worship leader says, now, worship God. Okay, lift your hands without dropping. <laughs> and you realize that you can't. Because you're trying to earn God's love. You're trying to earn, but you, can, you, 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 can't, you can't have that intimacy with God because of all these things. And every week in and week out, you come, you struggle because you carry these things. Thanks, Thomas. Come, let me help you. Let's give you a big hand, okay? Can I? That's the orphan spirit. And you find that for often spirited people, the often hearted people, the, a lot of the focus is on satisfying the flesh. And that's why when they come to service, they, they don't, how do I put it? They look for things that actually make their flesh feel good, in a sense. I want that kind of songs, not this kind of songs. I want the worship leader must sing in tune one no. The guitarist cannot make mistake. The lights are must boom boom a bit more no. I need all these things. Then I can worship God. I must have a car park lot every Sunday. You know, I cannot worship God. So you find that orphans, when they come into the house, they look for these things. But you know what? A son, when he comes into the house, it doesn't matter whether these things are present because the one thing that's most important to the, to the son 
is that his father is in the house. Doesn't matter who's on stage, the person sing out of key for 30 minutes during the worship, he can still worship God. Because God's presence and God's work and God's interaction with us is not dependent on somebody's gift. It's dependent on Him initiating to come and interact to love us. And He has already taken the first step 2,000 years ago when He came down and died on the cross for us. And today, every Sunday when you come, God is here. We don't need all these things. Of course, we try to make it our best, but you know what? We are not dependent on these things, not even dependent on the pulpit, who preaches. It doesn't matter. God can still speak to you. But when you come every week with an orphan heart, you will find that you need the best preacher. You need those that can entertain you, make you laugh, you know. Don't speak so long like Pastor Ernie. You need this kind. Then only God can speak to me. That is the orphan heart. By the way, we, you do all these things, right? Pray two hours a day, spend four hours a day in, in the Word of God, you know, do your outreach, do your, do your uh, go to the nations and all that. How do you determine if you're close to God? How do you know you're close to God? Because you did all these things, therefore you are close to God. If that's the route you're taking, you are transactional. You are the elder brother. Okay? And God wants us today to come back as sons in the house. Okay? So I want to encourage you this very day, you know, as I share all these things, is there an elder brother in you that needs to come home? That you need to stop being strong, say, wow, look at me, I can carry all these things, you know, I, I do all these things. You need to come before the Lord as someone that's weak and say, God, I'm weak. And it's only when you are weak that his strength can be made perfect in you. Okay? So we need to identify ourselves if, let's say, we have the elder brother in us. I like what uh, uh, someone that I really respect a lot, Vodi uh, Balkum, he's actually one of the, one of the very good preachers. He's now in Zambia, you know, went there to plant a Bible school, and he says this, it is easy to identify the sinner, the prodigal, very easy to identify, but it's not so easy to identify the sinner in you. We all can see the sinners everywhere, the prodigals, but can you, can you see it in you? That's the question here today. And the amazing thing is that for many of us, we are willing to hold on to all this stuff, week in and week out, come to the service, being distant from God, I can't feel God, it's okay. I can't catch anything from the preaching, it's okay. I can live like that for the rest of my life. And we are contented with that. And it saddens the heart of God because He wants His Son to come home. He wants to set His children free. And let me turn your attention right now to the father's response to the elder brother. Both sons were lost and needed to be found. And the father went out to both sons, not just one. So look something beautiful here. We know that the elder brother was very rude to the, to the father. But notice here how the father responded to the elder brother. Okay, the elder brother said, look, they even call the father by name. And the, son, the father responded, my son. The elder brother said, I have been slaving for you all these years. The father said, son, you are always with me. Number three, you never even give me a young goat to celebrate in my friends. The father said, everything I have is yours. And the, father said, uh, the, son, the elder brother said, this son of yours, this prodigal son of yours, the father said, this brother of yours. You see, the older brother responded as an orphan, but the father responded as a father. And here's the important lesson here. God's love is not just for the prodigals, the sinners, but also for those who are self-righteous, the orphan-hearted, the elder brother. God's heart is not merely for those who mess up their life, but for those who are self-righteous, prideful, 
but it takes a lot of guts to admit, I'm prideful, I'm the elder brother. Okay? And just as you thought the story would come to a climax and maybe the elder brother would give the father a hard go into the house, Jesus ends the whole story. It's almost he left us with a cliffhanger. Right? Imagine this, Star Wars, the trilogy, episode, episode uh, 6, you know, when Luke Skywalker was walking to meet the Emperor and Darth Vader, and then the story just ends there. Never resolving. This is what happens in the story of the prodigal son. Okay, this, this will never make it in Hollywood because for all of us, we need the story to resolve, correct? But this is the brilliance of Jesus. The reason why Jesus does this is because, remember, he was addressing the Pharisees. So right now, by ending that story abruptly like that, he's asking the Pharisees this question, you have seen the heart of God towards the prodigal and towards the elder brother. What is your response? And that is the same question he's asking all of us here today. You see the elder brother in you. You see the pride. You see the need to be strong everywhere you go, to put up that front so that everybody can see that front. Like, I'm strong. I don't need anyone. I'm a self-made man. I'm successful. You see that? And God is saying this. What is your response to my heart towards you? Will you be willing to lay down your defenses? Will you be willing to lay down your pride? and say, just like the prodigal, I too need to return to the Father's house. Can I suggest to us that the appropriate response for us today is brokenness. It's brokenness. And in Scripture, you see many, many men of God, many, many men of God, and they are all broken, and that's why God can use them so mightily. Okay? And I want to highlight to you one of them in particular, and that is King David. You see, King David was one of the most famous kings in all of Israel, right? We all know him. Man after God's heart. But deep within him, there was an older brother. There was an orphan heart that was never dealt with. And this came to the surface. Scripture says that in, I think it's in first, first, Second Samuel somewhere, okay? You know, in the season when the kings went to war, David stayed behind. And then out of, out of the blue, one day when he was in the balcony, he saw a woman bathing on the roof. And that's why her name was Baf Sheba. <laughs> I mean, who bathes on the roof, right? I, I, I don't understand the story, okay? And David, because the orphan heart was there and it started to surface, he felt he needed the, to satisfy the flesh. Remember, this is David, no, the man after God's heart. And it just blows my mind. It's like, wow, man after God's heart still struggle with the flesh. Called the woman in and slept with her and got her pregnant. In fact, if you really go and study the Hebrew that's really used there, it actually insinuates that David actually raped Bathsheba. Not just, it wasn't a mutual thing. And she became pregnant. To avoid embarrassment, the man after God's heart, you know, sent her husband to the front lines of the war, where at the front lines he will most definitely be killed. Okay, and he didn't feel a thing. He was okay. The key for him is this. I need to show myself strong, mighty, righteous before the people. He protected his image very strongly. Okay. And then once Uriah died on the battlefield, he brought Bathsheba in to become his wife. Now, in the eyes of the whole Israel, right, because they don't know what's happening in the palace, they don't know all these things, everybody thought that David did a noble thing by marrying Bathsheba. Because in the ancient times, when a, a woman becomes a widow and you don't have children, 
no one is going to look after you. Because remember, it is a very man-driven society. Women don't have anything. So when David married Bathsheba, everybody was like, wow, look at his heart. So honorable. He did this. So in the eyes of all of Israel, David was elevated because of the image he painted. But inside, he was corrupted. And this is a scary thing. This is really the scary thing. The scary thing is this. David didn't even know that what he does offended the Lord. You know you can come to that place in your life that you deceive everybody, including yourself. And that's the scariest place to be. Scariest, scariest place to be. And he went, off, he went on life as normal, you know. Amazing. Man after God's own heart. That's what he did. And it took the bonus of one prophet by the name of Nathan to confront him. And Nathan came before David and hold up the mirror and said, you are this man. You are that man. At that very moment, you see, David had a choice. He can execute Nathan, you know, and the, the story will end there. He can go on life as per normal. Erase that from history. He could have done that. But scripture says, David actually laid down his pride and he repented. He repented. God did not remove the punishment of his sin, but David repented. And the amazing thing is this. He even allowed the worst thing that happened in his life to be included in Scripture. King David, that's why he's known as the man after God's own heart. And David entered into a season of brokenness where he allowed God to heal him once again. And about one year later, he wrote one of the most beautiful psalms in the whole Bible, and that is Psalm 51. And I want to read to you the psalm as I bring this whole message to a close. <clears throat> it says in verse 1, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict, in your judgment, and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in the secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and renew a willing spirit to sustain me. Verse 13, Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. And that's why he allowed this episode to be written in Scripture. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, you who are God, my Saviour, and my tongue will sing your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and on my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice or I will bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a broken and, con and a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. May it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifices of the righteous, in burnt offerings offered whole. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. I want to end with a couple of things regarding this psalm here. Okay, number one is this. If you feel that you are an elder brother, you really need brokenness in your life. I say the Lord. You know, we always say... Tell the Lord, say, God, would you bless me? But have you ever prayed this? God, would you break me? 
And I feel more than ever before in this season of our church, maybe our prayers need to be, God, bring me to that place of brokenness. Why? Why? Because, number one, brokenness reminds me of God's grace. You see, um, something very interesting that David says here, he says that my sin is always before me. My sin is always before me. You see, we, we, we live in a day and age where there's so many teachings out there that teach you, you know, you know, if you do something wrong, you know, it's okay, God loves you, God forgives you, you know, and God will erase that memory of that sin. Do you know what? That is wrong teaching. That is wrong teaching. Because David says here that my sin is always before me. God doesn't take away the memory of the sin. If I kill someone today, right, and I say, God, forgive me, and God removes that memory, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I killed someone, but I cannot remember who, okay, too bad, let's go on with life, right? It's like, how do you repent? How do you live in repentance? God left that memory in David. It's like a scar of sin in his life. Why? To remind him how much his sin not just hurt the people around him, but hurt the Lord as well. You see, that's why God allows us to have memories of how wretched we are so that we can remember that while we are wretched, God made the first step to bring us home. And that's why we sing that song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a perfect man like me. Right? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a model disciple like me, a perfect parent like me. Isn't that what we sing? What does it say? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch. You never understand God's grace until you realize what a wretch you are. And sometimes we forget that. That's why we need brokenness in our life. We forget how wretch we are. We forget that what we have done in our lives cost God everything. And we forget that. And that's why there's so many teachings out there that pump people up to think themselves more than they should. You know what? May we never forget about the things that we have done that have hurt the heart of God and hurt people. Because, not because we want to cling on to the shame and the guilt and the accusation, but we remember that that is who I was, but this is not who I am because of God's grace in my life. I want to live like that. I don't want to forget all the things that I did wrong when I was younger because even though I, I, I was like that and I deserved God's punishment, but God brought me out from the pit and He established me and He loved me. And this is where I am today. But may I never forget that was where I came from. If not for the grace of God, I wouldn't be here. May we live like that. And number two is this, brokenness as a result of remembering God's amazing grace towards you, it brings you to a place of humility. I've always wondered this, you know, like, what would our church look like if everybody had humility? What would it look like if everyone in your cell had humility? It'd be very different, you know. It'd be very different. No more quarrels. Pastor have no more job to do. We don't need to preach so hard. Everyone is humble and just thinking about the other person. You see, without brokenness, you can never be humble. Without brokenness, you can never be humble. Okay? And some of you, you are sitting here and you are trying to hold on, like Pastor Thomas is now holding on to all those things. You are angry with God. You are angry with your fellow men. And God is saying this, would you allow yourself to lay down all these things, to be broken so that you are able to receive my love once again. Let me come in and let me heal. Brokenness is needed for humility to come so that all the days of our lives, we will live humbly before the Lord. Okay, and on the leaf, one last thought here. 
brokenness also causes us to realize that our only hope in life is in God. I want you to notice this, that David, as he was writing this, and this was almost like one year after the, the incident with Bathsheba, you know, and you will notice from his writing that he actually, there was an absence of joy and gladness. And that's why he says this, let me hear joy and gladness because it was absent in his life. See, God grant me the ability to rejoice again. God renewed the right spirit because something in me is so corrupted. God opened my lips so that I can praise you. All these things were absent in David's life. And maybe that's your situation. Week in and week out, you come to church. You don't know how to relate with God. You can't. There's something always blocking because of the elder brother in you. You know what? Pray and ask the Lord, bring me to the place of brokenness so that I can realize that my only hope is in you. And that's why you look through the whole Psalm 51. David says this, blot out, you know, blot out my sins, wash me, cleanse me, purge me, uh, create in me, renew a steadfast spirit, restore unto me, deliver me, open my lips. You realize that it is not about what David can do because he realized he can do nothing. To come back to the Lord. God has to initiate. And God did initiate. God was the one who went out to the older brother and tried to bring him in. The question for the older brothers is this. Are you willing to come back home, lay down your pride and say, God, break me, here I am. I want to end for the third time here. <laughs> As I share you the st- one final story here. Okay, because of time, I'm just going to shrink it very quickly. Most of you will know this particular pastor, preacher, evangelist, revivalist, Derek Prince. Okay, preached to millions of people, had thousands of crusades where 10,000 of people come to his crusades. Thousands of people getting healed, getting saved, getting uh, free from demonic oppression, Derek Prince. And also he wrote a lot of books. In fact, some people see him as one of the greatest Christian leaders of the 20th century. Okay? So just before he died, when he wrote, I think in one of the books here, he wrote about something that happened in his life when he was 80 years old. You see, for the 80 plus years of his life, he always addressed God as our Father and one morning at 80 years old, after he was on the bed, um, at the start of the bed together with his wife and they were praying, they finished praying, he encountered God very, very powerfully. And for the first time in his life, at 80 years old, he was able to say, My Father. My Father. All the crusades, all the things that he has, the ministry he has done in his life, never once was God his father. It was always our father. The difference, he experienced God as father that very morning. And he wrote in his book and he says that he was encouraging everyone you know, that read his book. He says this, don't wait until you are 80 years old until you start experiencing God as your father. And this incident impacted him so profoundly for the remaining seven years of his life, that he told his wife, you know what, you know what, honey, you know, when I die before, if I die before you, right, and you choose to put a tombstone um, on my grave, right, okay, write these words, Derek Prince, gone home. And this is exactly his tombstone. Today, if you go to the US, gone home. He's finally home in the father's house. I want to encourage you, friends, don't wait until you return to your eternal home. Today, you can come home to the Lord. Some of you, you really need to lay down your pride to acknowledge, yes, I am that older brother. I have pride in my life and I need God to bring me to that place of brokenness once again so that I can live humbly before the Lord, so that I can allow God to heal me and love me to wholeness and that's the desire of our Father God 
So can I invite all of us to just close our eyes right now? And I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to look into our lives right now. Holy Spirit, would you come and reveal right now in every one of our hearts, is there an older brother that's looking there that's preventing us from fully coming home, from fully experiencing the love of the Heavenly Father? Father, is there an older brother in our lives that causes us to be prideful, causes us to have the need to be strong, to look perfect on the outside, to strive to, to, to climb up the various ladders in the corporate world? Is there an older brother in us, God? Father, I pray if that is, Lord, would you come and help my brothers and sisters to stay, to lay down their pride, to stop being that strong man trying to get everything perfect but to help them to come to that place where they are broken and realize that there's that part of their lives that need your healing. So Holy Spirit, do what only you can do and reveal to every single one of us. And I pray, may we not walk out of this place the same way we walk in. May we not reach 80 years old of our lives and still be in the same place. Cling on to the disappointment, to the pride. God today set us free from ourselves, from our flesh. Thank you, Lord. Can I invite all of us to stand as I ask the worship team to lead us in this song? As we sing this song, just ask the Lord, you know, God, would you bring me back home this day? If that's your prayer, bring me back home this day. When I look upon your face When I gaze into your eyes And I remember what you've done when I think about the cross, I see your blood poured out. I remember what you've done, and I see. to leave in everything behind yes to forsaking everyone and right yes to living out the sum of your desires I say yes when I look when I look into your heart The broken and the lost And I remember what you've done And I see Some of your desires, I say yes. We say yes to you, yes to leaving everything behind, yes to forsaking everyone and right, yes to living out the sum of your desires. 
Invitation, you know, and the reason why we do this invitation is you no know, week in and week out is because sometimes the only way for us to come before the Lord is if we are willing to lay down our pride, willing to lay down the need to look strong, to be strong, to have it all together. And that's why we ask people to come to the front every week. So I want to issue a call to every one of us that the Holy Spirit has revealed to you there's an older brother living there and you're clinging on to disappointment you're clinging on to offense you're clinging on to your pride and the need to be right the Lord says you know as much as I love the prodigal I love you as well and don't walk out of this place cling, holding all those things carrying all those things out and I want to encourage you that as we sing the chorus of this song one more time I want to invite you to come to the front to lay down your defenses, lay down your pride. Come and be broken before the Lord and say, God, I need you. I want to stop living a lie. I want to stop living as though I have everything together. I need a Savior this day and I want you to come into my life. So if that is you as you sing the chorus, would you just come to the front and allow our pastors and the elders to come and pray together with you, all right? So as we sing this song, you know, don't hold on any longer, all right? But just make the step of faith. As you step out, God is going to step towards you and run towards you and hold you this very day, all right? So sing this song. Would you come to the front?
thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. You know, um, just before we close worship, um, this worship service, I'm going to invite the pastors and also the leaders that you, if you're here. Uh, yeah, we need more ministry team workers in front, so do come forward as well. All right. Yeah, but for the rest of us, you know, I know that God has been doing um, a, a work in our hearts and may He continue to do it over the next couple of weeks as we respond to Him as well. Uh, we also want to invite you, you know, to join us at 11.30 as we continue on with the next workshop here in this place as we continue to deal with different bondages, different hindrances that will prevent us from receiving God's love, alright? But if not, let's lift up our hands as we receive the Lord's blessing, shall we? And I'm also going to invite the leaders to come forward to pray for our, 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 you know, our brothers and sisters in front. And right now, may the amazing love of our Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship and power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen and Amen. Amen. Praise God. Go in the blessings of God. We will see you at 11.30. For those in front, someone will pray for you. Just remain where you are. Thank you. Yep, so if you know that you're an MTW ministry team worker, I'm going to invite you to come forward because we need more leaders to pray. You know, for those in front, praise the Lord. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. Oh